Welcome back. So today, Bruce Boudreaux not at the morning skate for the Canucks. Normally, that wouldn't be considered a huge deal. It's an optional, but uh, still. Uh, obviously, right away, people go to as Boudreaux fired. I do expect to make a video on, on that happening and my thoughts on it. I think people would know my thoughts on it. But it's interesting because Rick Tockett is likely taking over on TNT. He was asked about it, and he didn't give a direct answer. Um, and if I wasn't being considered for a job, I'd say, yeah, I don't know where those rumors are coming from. Yeah, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not going there. I'm flattered by the thought of it, but we haven't even had a discussion. None of those. None of that, none of that was said. So Rick Tockett, is, it, it warrants looking at his career. Now, I've talked about his playing career. I want to look at his coaching career uh, because it's an interesting one. Uh, he becomes an assistant coach first for the Colorado Avalanche in 2002-2003. Uh, assistant coach for them through the 03-04 season. Pretty good Colorado teams. Some really good star players, Hall of Famers that he coached there. 2005-2006, uh, he becomes an assistant coach with Arizona, working with Gretzky. This is where things get kind of sticky. Anytime you talk about Rick Tockett, there will be somebody who brings up the gambling ring, right? Remember the gambling ring. So... Rick Tockett was one of the top guys in a gambling ring that was uncovered. Uh, it was called Operation Operation Slapshot. But he was not the main guy. He was not the one they were looking for. It was basically, it was a corrupt, I believe it was a corrupt police officer they wanted instead. So he, he had a plea deal where he could have gone to jail, but he made a plea deal. He gets two years of probation. And he was on an indefinite leave due to this charge. And there was a debate about whether or not the NHL would ban him. And they kind of hemmed and hawed. And at any rate, he would get reinstated and eventually becomes the head coach of the Tampa Bay Lightning. Now, the year he takes over in Tampa is an interesting one, too. He replaces Barry Melrose early in the season. And there's two reasons. One, the team didn't start off very well. But they weren't expected to start off very well. And two... Um, the mishandling of Stamkos was taking place. Uh, it was always seen that that was part of the reason why the coaching change was made. So talk at the record in the 66 games he coaches, 19, 33, and 14, is not great, obviously, but Stamkos did make that turn. Stamkos did start that turn to become the star player that we all know now. Uh, 82 games the following season, 34, 36, and 12. That season, of course, Stamkos again takes a big step in his second year, but... At the end of the year, Tampa Bay, under new ownership, decided to basically clean house. Um, Jeff Finnick, the new owner, was not happy about the direction the team was headed in. Uh, didn't really have the patience for, you know, slowly digging your way out. And so he's replaced by Guy Boucher. Tampa Bay, the following season, had a very good record and ended up in the conference final in 2011. So I don't know how much of that is, is set by what was done the year before by Rick Tockett. But when Jeff Finnick uh, parted ways with Tockett, he had nothing but nice things to say about him. And Tockett had nothing but nice things to say about Jeff Finnick as well. So there were no hard feelings on either side. At least that's how it appeared. He was out of coaching until Pittsburgh brings him in 2014-2015 as an assistant coach. He would be an assistant coach there for three years. Uh, Stanley Cups as an assistant, both 2016 and 2017. So this is part of the reason why Jim Rutherford would be looking at Rick Tockett, previous experience. And I think that that's what both appeals to and frustrates people when they're looking at the way things are being done in Vancouver. Um, we, we know how Rutherford's tenure in Pittsburgh ended. Uh, we, we can kind of look aside from the, the Stanley Cups, sure, but I, I think that's kind of foolhardy. So at any rate, coming out of that second year uh, with the Stanley Cup, the Arizona Coyotes come a calling. Now, he'd been an assistant for them before. He knew the organization. So he becomes the head coach for the 2017-2018 season. The Arizona Coyotes, not a contender, have not been confused with a contender for a long time, and are still in the rebuild that they were in when they hired him for 2017-2018. They had a record of 29-41-12. and and he had replaced Rick, uh, uh, Dave Tippett. The record was almost identical. The points were identical to what Tippett had put up the year before. But, it, but in his second year, you can see a dramatic improvement in the defensive numbers for the Coyotes. <clears throat> which might be part of the reason why the Canucks would consider him an attractive option. Now, the record does not get better for Arizona. They were 29-36-8 that second year. But the, the picture's not that bad. So then in 2019-2020... 
The pause shortened the season, so Arizona played 70 games. Record of 33-29-8. Not a great record, but because of the pause, they expand the playoffs. Arizona gets in based on that. They play Nashville in the qualifying round. They beat Nashville in the qualifying round. Then in round one, they weren't going to win in round one. Darcy Kemper did his best, but they weren't going to win in round one. They get eliminated and uh, quickly. But again, there was some progress there, it seemed. And then, of course, we had the 2020-2021 season where you're only playing against your division. Uh, Arizona ends up 24-26-6 and six that season. And at the end of the year, there was kind of a mutual agreement to part ways. Um, I, I don't know if, if he was saying, well, you can't fire me, I quit. I don't know if they both sat down and at the same time said, this isn't working. But at any rate, uh, that was the end of his time there. And he's replaced by Andre Turney. Now, Turney has gotten points out of Arizona that he has no business getting out of Arizona. It's been worse lately. Currently, as I'm recording this, they've lost 10 of their last 11 but yeah, Turney has kept Arizona at least somewhat competitive and respectable when they really tore things down after firing Tockett. So I don't know that we know what we're going to get with Tockett behind the bench for the Canucks. I do expect, um, I'm seeing media saying it's going to be false hope they're selling. Um, I, I think it's important that, I, I will agree with this too though, if the Canucks are going to make deals at the deadline looking to next season, you need Tockett behind the bench first. If he's going to be your guy, you have to get him behind the bench first. He has to be the head coach because he has to have a say in who's sticking around and who isn't. We already know from Vancouver history, when you bring in a coach and you've got a roster that isn't really designed to play for said coach, it doesn't last. So I'm not a fan of the way Vancouver's done this at all. I absolutely don't like it. I don't like that Rutherford said, well, yeah, I'm talking to other coaches. I think that's disrespectful to the guy who's behind the bench. Um, and that's a debate we can have as well about how disrespectful it is or it isn't. But it, it is it is tough. It's tough to watch because as a fan of the Canucks, I, I really enjoyed uh, Bruce Boudreaux's time behind the bench. I think he's a good coach. I just don't think he has a very good team. And uh, I think there'll be a lot of stories that come out from Bruce after this is all said and done. Uh, some entertaining ones to be sure. Boudreaux's always an entertaining guy. And it, it's just, it's too bad, you know, because the fans love Boudreaux. Uh, I think Tockett's walking into a situation where uh, it, it's, it's going to be a tough crowd because he's replacing a very popular coach. It's one thing to come in and replace a coach that fans are chanting to get fired, but it's another thing to replace a coach that the fans are chanting for every time the Canucks have a lead which they, they haven't had as much this year as they had last year under his tenure. I also do wonder, though, I mean, again, like I said, you got to get, you have to get talk up behind the bench so he can get a feel for the team. But, uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting to watch this team at the deadline and see who they, who they keep and get rid of. Uh, I know there's a lot of talk about, oh, they need to keep Horvat, but if Horvat's going to be $9 million plus, it just you can sell that to the fan base right now, but as soon as he gets off to a slow start next year, they're all calling for Alvin's head. How dare you sign this contract? We told you it was a career year. So uh, at any rate, Tockett's going to... And, and the one thing I will say with Tockett is, um, he, is he is known as as tough. Like he's, he's, not, he's not a guy who when he played in the NHL was exactly uh, easy to play against. And I think that his style and his personality... It could help fix a problem the Canucks have had this year. The whole JT Miller thing, I I think under the right coach, I think we'd see that all settle down. How many times have we seen a player in the NHL where things aren't working and their whole game seems to be a little off, and then you make a change behind the bench and things might get better? And it doesn't always. There's no guarantee. Uh, but then the other the other question becomes one of so let's say they make this change, uh, if the team starts winning. Is that the worst case scenario? A, it takes you out of Bedard watch. Uh, one of the reasons I took the Canucks to make the playoffs is because Bedard was in the draft. And I thought Bedard's the most hyped prospect I've seen since McDavid. Oh yeah, the Canucks unexpectedly made the playoffs in 2015 because McDavid was in the draft. So eh, it would track if the Canucks made the playoffs in 2023 just so they don't get Bedard. So if they start winning games, if they start getting it together, and they could, we could see a situation where Demko comes back, he's himself again, he starts winning games he shouldn't, 
and maybe they end up with a record of say 84 or 85 points considering where they are right now that's 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 good enough that then they can sell you on the hope for next year so I, I I also wonder like is this the coach that they want during the rebuild slash retool process and it doesn't matter what they call it um, I've seen people getting mad about them calling it a retool. How did they, they should call it a rebuild? It doesn't matter what they call it. They're tearing it down this year is the plan. And then it's a matter of they want to make sure they're not at the bottom for, for, for 5, 6, 7, 10, 12 years. Because again, and I've said this and I'll say it again, tearing down a team is easy. Selling off assets, I know in this, this salary cap world it's not as easy as it was. But in the offseason, it'd be easy to sell off your assets it is tough to build things back up. It is tough to become a contending team and a playoff team again. And I could mention Arizona as an example. They've been in a rebuild for a long time. Buffalo, rebuilt, long time. It's been a half a decade for Ottawa. They were supposed to be digging their way out. Haven't really done that. For Detroit, it's been about a half a decade so far. And there's a lot of good young players there. And it looks like Detroit's going to be a playoff team, but they're not yet. And so the frustration people feel... And the need for a direction, I think, is important. And I'm not sure what Talkett signals in terms of a direction. Because I don't know that he's coming in here to lose. I don't know that he's coming in here to to coach a team that, you know, is going to be not good enough for the next couple of years. But we'll see, right? Uh, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.